All right, chip of the day. The chip of the day is a DLP11SA900HL2L. Yeah, that's a long one. Uh, this is by the uh, Murata uh, Manufacturing Company. And it is a common mode choke coil. Okay, chip common mode choke coil. And uh, it has, uh, here, it looks like this. There's a winding here and a winding here, and you can send your signal through, and any common mode will get canceled out. Uh, if there's common mode noise here, it's going to be the same on both, and it'll uh, filter that out. Um, so it is a tiny little package, and when I say tiny little package, I am not kidding. Uh, can you see those little, oops, can you see those little guys in there? <laughs> Davy tiny, Davy super super tiny. This is the smallest object I've ever tried to solder. <laughs> I almost threw these away because I figured I I just can't deal with these. These are just too small. Um, but yeah, uh, we're gonna give them a go. Um, let's see what these things are supposed to do. Uh, there's some data in here, and basically. Um, they act as an inductor, they are an inductor. And so um, this is a graph of frequency and resistance or impedance actually, right? The, the, the resistive uh, nature of the thing. Um, so from one megahertz to 10 gigahertz, uh, there's a line of resistance, right? So at one megahertz, it's gonna have an impedance of about one ohm. At 10 megahertz, around uh, six, seven ohms. Uh, 100 megahertz, it's going to be up here around 90, uh, yeah, about 90 ohms, and at a gigahertz, it's up here around 700 ohms, okay? That's in common mode. In differential mode, it's going to act a bit differently, and uh, at uh, 900 megahertz, it's going to be up here around... But a gigahertz is going to be up here around seven, uh, 70 ohms, okay? So I don't know exactly how they spec these things, because uh, the data sheet tells you one thing, but then the, the, the part numbering tells you a different thing. It says, it says here that uh, they tested, oh, I see, oh, I'm sorry. They tested it at 100 megahertz. Okay. So they tested it at 100 megahertz and they get 90 ohms. Even though the part number is 900, uh, which stands for impedance at, oh, I get it now. Okay. So 900 is actually 90, uh, which is the impedance at 100 megahertz. At 100 megahertz, you get 90 ohms. Okay, so we should be looking for 90 ohms at 100 megahertz. All right, that's good to know. And there, you can pass 150 milliamps through them. You get a, a series resistance of 1.4 ohms. So, yeah, there you go. So they're funny little guys. Okay, so I'm going to measure them two different ways. Um, uh, we need to measure at pretty high frequencies, right? So we can't... Um, we can't use something like this because this only goes up to 100 kilohertz, right? The mass max is out at 100 kilohertz. We won't be measuring at 100 megahertz. So we're going to have to use different types of instruments. And I have two that will, will, get, us, will get us there. All right. So first thing is that we have to figure out how to hold these guys. <laughs> so I did, find, I did find a PC board in my arsenal that I think I could use. So um, I used my little tiny hot plate and I, I soldered this guy down. He was a pain in the rear to, to do, but I think I got him up and running. So uh, I'll show you a picture here of the um, my wonderful soldering job, but it, it's functional. All right, so we're going to take this thing uh, on two different instruments. And they happen to be in my lab on top of one another. I have a, an LCR meter and I have a vector network analyzer, and we can use both of these things to measure the um, impedance of this thing. Now this instrument can go up to 10 megahertz, okay? So let's try him first. First thing we want to do is calibrate. So I have a test socket here that we'll be able to use our little device in, all right? We want to calibrate, so we're going to do an open, 
and then we'll do a short. So it's it's calibrating, it's open, and then we'll short short out the uh, pins. We'll do a short calibration, just like you would a VNA. You do an open short. It, it's using the same technology. It's using phase information, um, and so it is a vector voltmeter. Um, so then we can put on our little device, all right? And uh, here we're measuring six ohms. So let's let's go way up here so we can watch this one. Okay, so um, we are measuring six ohms of impedance, uh, 83 degree uh, tangent angle um, at 10 megahertz. So this is the 10 megahertz value. Here's the four megahertz value. It's dropped to 3.7, two megahertz, 2.2, 1 megahertz, 1.6, 400K, 1.4, 200K, 100K, 40K, 20K, and 10K. It only goes down to 10K. So we are here about 1.3. But if we go all the way up to 10 megahertz, we're about 6 ohms. Okay, so let's check our, uh, let's check our data sheet. All right, so we were able to go up to 10 megahertz and we were measuring six ohms, 6.6 6 and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half is about there. So that's, that's, our, that's our measurement. Um, so it's sort of following this line here, right? All right, so let's see if we can't go up the curve. We'll go up to a mega, 100 megahertz and, and higher, okay? All right, so let's go back to our instruments. All right, so now next time we're gonna be using the VNA. Okay, and so in order to use the VNA, we have to be able to get it into a SMA connector. And so I built a little adapter card here that allows us to plug our device into an SMA. Um, and so we will, we will attach that and we will hook our device on. There we go. And there you go. We got a little spiral. Very cool. All right. So what does the spiral tell us? We're sweeping between 500 megahertz and one gigahertz. And this is a graph of impedance. All right. And um, at uh, 100 megahertz, let's do a marker at 100 megahertz. Okay, uh, we are down at the bottom here, marker 500, wait a minute, marker at, oh, we want to go down to, I have to change my frequency, frequency we need to start at 100 megahertz. All right, so we can now set our marker at 100 megahertz. And uh, we can measure the impedance. Uh, it's about 130 ohms, okay? So 130 ohms at 100. All right, so here's 100 and we're measuring 130, which is about 200, about here. All right, so we, we measured this point and we measured this point. So we're sort of following this line. And uh, this is the data sheet line, that one right there. So we're measuring pretty good. Uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can run it up to a thousand here and see what we get. All right. All right. And we will change our marker to 1,000. And we're about 48 ohms, 47 ohms. All right, so sort of from above 800 megahertz, it's kind of spiraling the 50, 50 ohm part there. That's kind of fun. Anyway, so there you go. This is a good way to measure, um, measure devices. Now we're on the Smith chart where we're on this half, we can measure the uh, inductance. So we're about 13 nanohenries of inductance. I don't think the data sheet actually tells us what the inductance is. They're just worried about the uh, impedance. Um, so we can just take a look at the ohms, ohms, ohms meter there. Let's see where it's actually 90 ohms. 
Uh, let's see, where is it at 90? Is it about the same? We're about 90 ohms right there, right at about 775 megahertz. So, yeah, it's pretty darn close to the data sheet. Okay, so people were confused about uh, my VMA hookup. Basically, I had a, a SMA coax, okay? So here's an SMA, SMA connector, and uh, I have a ground and I have a center, center conductor, right? And I, what I did was I took out a little device under test, which is an inductor, and I hooked it up like this. So we're just putting an inductor across the uh, across the center conductor to ground. So that's what my little uh, test jig does, does. And then we're injecting a signal and taking a look at the re return loss and the uh, impedance in uh, co uh, complex coordinates and stuff. And we can calculate out the uh, uh, inductance and impedance. So yeah, there you go. And then the um, uh, LCR meter does the same thing. It hooks it up like this, injects some signals, takes a look at the phase relationship between voltage and current and stuff, and does the calculation and figures out what type of inductor you have. So there you go. I've done a bunch of videos on all those things. So take a look at my channel. But uh, yeah, that was chip of the day, a um, DLP11SA900HL2. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. They're like, they're like the size of pepper. <laughs> That's crazy.